What's up everybody, Frank from 5A Ramen and I'm showcasing more of Fukuoka City's best tonkotsu ramen. I've done several best of Fukuoka tonkotsu ramen videos before, but there's just too many great ramen shops here. Here's another video. And what's a little bit different about this video is we're showcasing several different styles of tonkotsu ramen. From what they call a cappuccino tonkotsu ramen with bubbles to fried tonkotsu ramen. Alrighty, let's do this. Thanks for tuning in to 5AM Ramen. This channel is dedicated to delivering you the very best ramen info from the land of the rising sun. I'm Frank and ramen eating is what I do. The island of Kyushu is one of my favorite areas in Japan and it's the setting for this mini ramen series that you're now watching. We're in the sixth and final episode of the series having toured northern Kyushu up to now, specifically Saga and Fukuoka prefectures. Here's where we left off. I just crushed five bowls in Kitakyushu, Fukuoka prefecture's second largest city. Last night, I left Kitakyushu city and returned to Fukuoka city, Fukuoka prefecture's largest city. This is where we'll be ending our series. Of course, ramen is king across Fukuoka. But I want to point out that Fukuoka is home to a lot of other amazing food too. This includes yakitori or grilled chicken skewers. Last night, I caught up with a friend over yakitori at Nobuhide, a spot I usually visit in Fukuoka. If you have a chance, try some yakitori in Fukuoka alongside ramen. Today though, we're back to the ramen grind. And as mentioned, we're going to be trying several variations of tonkotsu ramen. Our first stop is Ikosha known for modern tonkotsu ramen and a foamy soup. Ikosha has a number of ramen shops in Japan and abroad, but we're visiting their flagship shop today. Here's my recap on the ground after Ikosha. Okay, I'm taking a little breather. Normally I'm walking and talking, but found a quieter spot here, so thought here to recap about Ikosha. Now Ikosha, their claim to fame is being the first again to start this awake or bubble style of tonkotsu ramen. I visited Hakata Iso before and basically they had trained at this place, Ikosha, but compared to Hakata Iso, this was a gentler, more politely presented and prepared bubble style ramen. Hakata Iso, they are much porkier. They're tossing in so many pork bones into the soup. It's it's really in your face. This, to match what is a cleaner interior, the pork bone ramen is not smelly or they do a good job of hiding it. And also, from what I gathered, there is less pork bones going into the soup. It's just a more delicately presented, again, and delicately prepared tonkotsu ramen. Of course, the pork bone flavor is strong with this one, but not as quite as strong and intense as it is at Hakata Iso. Great bowl, relaxing environment. I just made it in time before the lunch crowd. There are a lot of offices in this area right next to Hakata Station. And as such, yeah, after 12, 15, 12, 30 or so, there's gonna be a line. So do keep that in mind. I just made it in before there was any buildup. The noodles, interestingly enough, they were not as dry as I would have thought, or at least as dry as you get in a lot of the bowls here. The noodles had a little bit more water in them than normal, and they were also flat, which was interesting. Very flat, great to slurp, and it's fun, of course, to pick up little pockets of those bubbles in the soup. Beautifully cut, tiny pieces of negi, modern, soft, and fatty chashu pork, deliciously creamy egg, and on the table or counters, you of course can decide to add a little bit of spice or their red pickled ginger. Or I shouldn't say red pickled ginger because these were actually yellow, but pickled ginger to give a little bit of sweetness and to sort of supercharge the soup in a different way, cut through that creaminess. Great bowl, finally glad I visited this place. Moving on to ramen shop number two, which is fried tonkotsu ramen. Sounds strange and it perhaps is, but this is one of the best places to get it apparently. Yes, you heard me correctly. Fried tonkotsu ramen. We're getting it at a spot called Ono Shokudo. But before Ono Shokudo, let's briefly talk about our recently launched Fukuoka Ramen Guide. This handy guidebook includes info about the best ramen shops in Fukuoka. Not just Fukuoka City either. Furthermore, you'll find ramen shops not featured on YouTube, like these two spots in Kurume City, for example. Grab the guide if you're planning a trip to Fukuoka and use the promo code on screen when purchasing. Anyways, 
back to Ono Shokudo for fried ramen. Let's hear what I have to say about this bowl. Okay, here's a little recap of Ono Shokudo. That was a massive bowl. It was endless. I always get excited when there are more vegetables because for the most part, you don't have a crazy amount of vegetables in ramen. There are some ramen styles like tammen with a lot of vegetables. And yes, there are some ramen shops that maybe pile in more vegetables. But for the most part, vegetables are more of a garnish. Yeah, you have bamboo shoots, but outside of that, mostly spring onions, a bit of a garnishing. So I was very excited that there were a lot of vegetables especially when I've been eating ramen every day. My body is like, yes. But there were also a lot of noodles. These were thin noodles that really soaked up that pork bone broth in a fried form. As the noodles and of course the soup were fried, it had this nice smokiness. The noodles also had a little bit of a burnt flavor depending on you know where they were sitting on top of that giant almost serving pan that it comes in and of course it was piping hot super hot temperature wise you have to really blow on the noodles and everything else to cool it down and that pork bone soup provided this nice creamy richness but it wasn't overly rich just because there's less of the soup for one and i think the vegetables balance it out a little bit furthermore it kind of reminded of like a japanese chinese dish with ankake on top ankake is a thick starchy layer and you have that here too but this also felt like champon, which also has a lot of vegetables, but has a more creamy base. So it was almost like fried champon. And just like champon, you had squid and kamaboko fish cake alongside those crunchy vegetables. You also were given a soy sauce and also a little bit of vinegar if you want to change the flavor. The soy sauce was on the sweeter side, kind of like bulldog sauce over here. That soy sauce from Nagasaki. And yeah, the vinegar provided some nice sourness. Last but not least, every single meal in there for lunch comes with a mini bowl of ramen. Oh, I am full, bursting at the seams now. And I feel like I haven't even gotten through two thirds of the video yet. But yeah, there was a little mini ramen there and it was surprisingly good. Nice rich flavor and thin noodles that you would only expect in the ramen in this part of the country. So that was a lot of fun. I've had yaki ramen or fried ramen before, but it's been a long time. And I think I need to take a little bit of a break before the next bowl, oh my God. If you add it all up, I mean, that was the equivalent of like two bowls right there, not including the mini ramen. I feel like I've already had three and a half, if not four bowls already. So I think a little bit of a break is in order before that next one. Coffee break time, a little rest and ramen reflection before the next ramen shop. And this ramen shop ends up being the final one in the video and in the series. We therefore had to make it count. Ganso Nagahamaya is where we're going. They've played a key role in Fukuoka ramen history. Open since 1952, they're responsible for Nagahama-style tonkotsu ramen. More details now with my recap. Good God, how do I get myself into these messes? I forgot how massive the portion of noodles is at Ganso Nagahamaya. Oh my goodness. It's just never ending noodles. In terms of cost performance, my God, I mean, with ramen that cheap and the amount of noodles you get, of course, there's an overall simplicity to everything in the bowl. Pretty bare bones. So it's a understandably popular, quick eat and go style of ramen for locals that doesn't break the bank at all. All. The soup is not that rich. Of course, it's a tonkotsu soup, but it's on the lighter side. Thinner, lighter, but still full of flavor. And at every table, you have condiments to your liking. This includes sesame seeds. I always go for beni shoga or red pickled ginger. That was the case here. I also added more tare or seasoning for the soup. This made it saltier, gave it a tangy soy sauce punch. But those noodles just kept coming back and back. Nagahama ramen is a little bit different from Hakata ramen. Both are from this area, Fukuoka City. And and in recent years, they've kind of blended together. However, the roots of the shu ramen are different. Nagahama ramen started in Nagahama, where a lot of people involved in fishing would want a quick bite to eat after coming back after the day's catch or going out to sea. And thin noodles, of course, were the name of the game because they took less time to boil. So it has blue collar roots. And Ganso Nagahama is one of the most famous that serves this style. On a random note, the three staff that were serving me at the time were, I believe, Nepalese. I think I was hearing them speaking in Nepalese. And you see 
this in Tokyo, but not that much outside of Tokyo. I think this was the first time I saw non-Japanese staff working there. And as is the case here, they've got an assembly line, all the bowls are lined up, boom, 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 they can dish out their ramen quickly, people are in and out, sometimes within five minutes. It's very much a cafeteria style ramen restaurant, but that's part of the appeal. You definitely feel like you've slipped back in time a little bit. And if you want to get full, this is the place to go. Oh man, after that yaki or fried ramen, I'm thinking I might have to call it for today. All right, everyone, I've decided I'm gonna tap out. I had 20 bowls in total this trip, so I think not a bad number. I did spread it out a little bit more this trip, but still maintained a great pace of ramen eating. But yeah, I'm gonna tap out right now. I'm very full, and I also have a flight to catch, so it works out. I hope you still enjoyed this video of Tonkotsu Ramen showcased in a different way at three different ramen shops. There's a whole lot of ramen in Fukuoka. I still need to come back and eat. Plenty of places I still wanna showcase case here on camera but for now we say goodbye but not farewell to Fukuoka city and it's fantastic ramen scene I hope you enjoyed this video and the other videos in this Fukuoka ramen series and if that's the case please hit that like button consider subscribing if you already haven't and I'll see you in the next ramen video as always thanks for watching